It's the Real Estate Podcast, brought to you by ANZ Home Loans for financial well-beings. And welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Podcast, available on iHeartRadio every morning and on Spotify and Apple and wherever you get your podcasts from. Well, it's Friday morning. It is back with us. Yes, the 23rd day for September for 2022 and a strange, strange, bizarre day yesterday, having a public holiday to pay respect to the Queen. Some people making the comment to me yesterday that they didn't know what to do with themselves. Did it feel that way for you? I have to say that it did feel a little bit weird on a Thursday, but the good news is today is Friday and the weekend is nearly here. And coming up, we are shortly going to be speaking with Rich Harvey about your property fears when buying any sort of real estate, some of the emotions and the psychology of the whole process, and some of the indicators for that fear. And one of the emotions of fear right at the minute is the war in the Ukraine. And yesterday I saw a very interesting interview with a Russian former former Prime Minister, who said that he thinks that Putin will be replaced by the end of the year. And yesterday, of course, there were protests in the streets of Russia, people being arrested. But there seems to be this changing mood in Russia. And what a Christmas gift that would be if Putin is replaced by the end of the year. And the former Prime Minister of Russia said that the war more than likely would stop straight away. And wouldn't that be a great start for our 2023? And what sort of a confidence would that send to the real estate market? If Putin is gone by New Year's Eve, imagine the celebration. It's your weekday real estate breakfast with news, interviews and predictions every morning on the Real Estate Podcast. Well, a sought-after suburb in Canberra is sold this week for just over $2.6 million in an auction full of builders and developers scrapping it out to develop on the land. So what do you get for $2.6 million in Canberra? Well, 700 square metres in size that can accommodate single or multi-dwelling developments. Yeah, this is a great confidence sign, isn't it? 16 registered bidders all looking to knock down the existing home and to rebuild. Yarra Lumla is the suburb, so that is a great confidence sign. And if you're celebrating your birthday today for the 23rd of September, have a fantastic Friday. Just a couple of birthday calls. Ray Charles, he would have been celebrating his birthday. Unfortunately, he passed away back in 2004. But somebody still alive and kicking and rocking it out is Bruce Springsteen. He is celebrating his birthday 72, 72 the boss. Happy birthday. It's your real estate podcast for breakfast. It's the main centre forecast with PRD, selling smarter every day. Let's head around Australia and have a look at your weather on this Friday morning. And first we go to Sydney, expecting the wet stuff with some rain. So grab the brolly and the raincoat, 21 is your forecast high. In Melbourne, also the rain with showers in 17. In Brisbane, expect partly cloudy but dry conditions, 27 is your forecast high. And in Perth today, expecting blue skies with sunshine and a high of 21 degrees. We are just as addicted to property as you are. Let's Talk Property, a podcast series with Rich Harvey. Well, when it comes to making property decisions, there are a whole raft of fears that can rise to the surface and cloud someone's thinking, someone's judgment. Fear and greed are two major emotions that can drive people's decision making and can have that paralyzing effect, that paralyzing impact on your behavior. And psychologists will tell you that one of the best ways to overcome your fears is to name and confront them head on. So it is a Friday. So here to discuss this is buyer's advocate Rich Harvey from propertybuyer.com.au, fresh from winning awards recently to help us uncover some of the major fears that many of today's vendors and buyers are facing. And a very good morning, Rich. Welcome back to the Real Estate Podcast. Good morning, Craig. Good to be with you again on a Friday. 
And a weird day yesterday with that public holiday, a one-off. How did you go? Yeah, well, look, it's a bit strange. Uh, I don't normally have a holiday on a Thursday, but obviously it was done to honour the Queen, who has a remarkable life of service. I mean, if you've got to look at anyone in a leadership role who has both humility and unending service to their cause, no, you can't go past the Queen. Yes, it's that one day to really remember her. So let's have a look at this whole fear aspect. Uh, One of the most common phrases that became part of the property culture, I guess, was this word FOMO that cuts straight to fear itself, doesn't it? It does. Look, uh, I'm going to be sort of mentioning a whole bunch of acronyms today, Craig, and FOMO has been one that's bandied around so many times, fear of missing out. It just simply means that you've got lots of buyers who've been sitting on the sidelines and then saw prices rocketing up last year, you know, and they all went, oh gosh, if I don't get into the market, I'm going to miss out. And so people were just, you know, throwing hundreds of thousands of extra dollars at auction and, and at properties so that they could be part of the market and feared that if they didn't get in now, they'd never get in. And so it became just a self-fulfilling prophecy of, of purchases paying well above the, uh, the price and a lot of records were set uh, because of that fear of missing out phenomenon. Yeah, and that's kind of like tampered down somewhat. Now that the market has turned, we're hearing the phrase of a fear of overpaying. Again, another fear factor coming to the fore. Yeah, well, if you want to put an acronym to that one, F-O-O-P, FOOP. That's where literally everyone is sitting on the fence, fear of overpaying. It's just simply because of interest rates rising, demand really slowing, and all of the buyers have just stopped in their tracks. So what we're seeing now is obviously softening prices and a lot lower transactions is another acronym called phobie or fear of being involved. People are now actually running the other way. They've got their finances approved, and but they're going to auction, but they're just standing there with their arms folded. They actually don't want to participate because they're all thinking, well, what about interest rates going higher? What if Russia really goes all out in the war? What if the US goes into recession? And they basically convince themselves in their minds that prices are really going to crash And as a result, they do nothing. And then often what happens, they regret taking action when they could have. And then the market will turn up again and they they wish they had been involved. Yeah, yeah. So interesting, the subject of fear, because it is so relevant, particularly where we are right now, as you say, about the war. If that escalates, what happens? And people get scared about a lot of different things when buying property. It's understandable. They are fearful of making a mistake, a misstep. What's your whole advice on that subject on how someone can overcome that fear? Well, yeah, a lot of people are fearful of making mistakes and it's really debilitating for them if they if they think, gosh, if I don't make every move perfectly, it's going to end in disaster. And I think a lot of the conversations we have with ourselves are just within our head. And it's really important to get other professionals on your side that can give you true and independent advice. You know, they're often worried, oh, look, I'll pick the wrong property or I'll pay too much or I'll buy in the wrong area or all that sort of thing. So how do you overcome it? Well, get educated, number one. Get out there and and have a look at what properties are trading for. Talk to successful people who've done it really well in property and see what steps they've taken and then simply emulate those stakes. If you don't want to make a mistake, look at the people who have made mistakes, that have over leveraged, that have bought in mining towns or bought holiday houses in areas that got very high vacancy rates. You know, look at all the classic mistakes. I mean, I've written lots of other articles about, you know, the 10 classic mistakes that investors and home buyers make read all of those articles and that way you'll have good information from which to then make good decisions. And part of a lot of the news cycles that are reported around real estate at the moment is focused on the interest rate fears are running rampant and many people feel that's being amplified through the media itself. What is your take on that whole issue of amplification of negativity I guess? Oh, Craig, we could talk for hours about the media. Uh, It really gets up my goat that, you know, there's some of the headlines are just so sensationalized. And unfortunately, it drives a lot of consumer behavior. 
interest rates are rising. That's just a fact of life. We knew they were going to rise and suddenly it's as if, oh, this is all like incredibly bad news. Well, we have to raise interest rates because inflation genie is out of the bottle and you've got to get that back in the bottle. Otherwise, it can run rampant and cause a lot of problems. So inflation has to be contained. But all the latest data is actually showing that the inflation factor is not as bad as it was first made out to be. We don't have the same problems in the US and the UK where inflation is running almost at over 10%. Ours is going to peak at around 7%. And by the end of next year, it'll be back in the bottle again at around the 2 to 3% range. So this fear of interest rates, you know, what it does, it just puts fear into the heart of borrowers, worried that they won't be able to afford their repayments. So the main way to overcome that is get a good finance broker on your side, crunch the numbers, do your budget, and look uh, at what you can actually afford. I mean, when you go to a bank or a broker and they do an assessment, they're always going to build in typically a 3% buffer above the current mortgage rate. If the mortgage rate is 4%, they'll reassess your repayments at 7%. Now, I don't believe in any way in hell you're going to get mortgage rates back up to 7% in the next 10 years. But I would suggest that that borrowers have a small buffer in place and be able to manage their repayments so you can actually pay off more than what's expected. And that way you can sleep comfortably at night. Yes, it's all about sleeping comfortably at night, that's for sure. And many people, they're fearful of never owning their own home and being stuck in the rent cycle forever, which, let's face it, it's a growing and serious problem that Australia faces. It's real and it seems to be a growing problem, especially when you look at the rents rising. So what do you think about people's fears and emotions around this issue? Yeah, well, the the fear of of continually renting is a very common one. If you look at the data for our census over the last 30 years, you'll always see that one third of the population own their homes outright with no mortgage, one third are paying off a mortgage, and one third are renters. Now, every five years when they do the census, you see a slight variation on those numbers, but it's typically 30, 30, 30%. But it is a problem because we are descending into a nation of renters, and that's not such a bad thing, as long as you have investment properties in other areas. So I think people should be rent vesters and not just avoid buying property at all. Property has always been proven to be a great bedrock to building wealth. And property is very forgiving over time. Even if you overpay by a couple of hundred grand, you'll find that over the next 10 to 15 years, you will definitely make a strong capital gain. So uh, I think it's tough for people that are in the rental cycle. It's really tough when you're trying to save a deposit, when you're paying school fees, when you're paying for everything that's going up. But it really comes down to having good financial discipline, Craig, and setting aside a budget to save for a deposit from a very young age. And the other problem that we've got coming in the next five years, and and particularly next year, is rents are rising dramatically. So, you know, there won't be enough rental property around and the price you're paying for rents is also rising dramatically. So it's a very difficult situation being a renter. And one of the most classic fears is buyer's remorse. This is a person's reaction at the end of the buying process. So what is the best way, do you think, for someone to deal with this whole buyer's remorse problem? Oh, Craig, we've seen plenty of buyer's remorse. But I've got to say, when people buy with us at Property Buyer, they really generally don't have buyer's remorse. So that sort of goes to show that we're doing the right thing, helping them as a buyer's agent through that whole buying journey that, you know, they'll often come to us because they have all of these fears, because they're worried about interest rates, because they're worried about buying in the wrong area. So I think um, buyer's remorse is happens to people that buy too quickly and they haven't prepared themselves for what they're getting into. They're worried about overpaying for a property or they're worried about they've actually bought the property in the wrong area. And one of my team was bidding at an auction a couple of years ago. The property was was knocked down to a successful buyer and then apparently the couples just looked at each other and went, went white and they went, what have we done? And they went to the agent and said, no, we want to retract our bid. And it says, too late, you bought the property, it's yours. And so they came over to uh, to our buyer's agent and said, look, you know, these guys actually don't want to buy the property. Does your buyer want to buy it? And we said, well, look, we offered 20 grand less. As it turned out, we actually managed to, to buy the property and the vendor was willing to actually accept 10 grand less than what the property was sold for. So pretty amazing situation. That buyer was very lucky to get out of it, I've got to say. Um, Very, very unusual. I've never seen it, but that's just a classic case of massive buyer's remorse. 
classic and and nerve-wracking at the same time. Now, most transactions, of course, will include a real estate company and an agent who will go about the whole process of marketing a property and then selling it. And there are people who fear the selling agent themselves. So what do you think is going on there? What are they scared of? Yeah, look, there's a lot of things. Unfortunately, real estate agents uh, have been considered untrustworthy according to the Roy Morgan research. And a lot of people are scared that agents are not telling them the truth, that they're just there to rip them off. There's all these false perceptions. And look, the majority of agents that I work with are absolute professionals. They're trustworthy and they do the right thing. There are some that will play games, particularly when it comes to negotiating. And this is what I think that most buyers are scared of, that the agent's playing them and really playing with their emotions and really trying to capitalize on all of their fears to get them to pay a higher price than what they're willing to pay. So it's really important that when you're dealing with an agent that you play a straight bat. You know, for me, when I say to an agent, look, I have a client that's genuinely interested. I tell them we're likely to be putting in an offer or we will be putting in an offer. I don't do that. I don't muck around. Um, But people try to play games with agents because they know that the agents play games with them. Part of the cure here is, again, is is if you wish to have someone between you and the agent, like a buyer's agent, they can pr- protect you and give you that sort of puffer and that sort of filter of truth, if you like. But agents aren't there to be scared with. They're there to do a job to sell the property for the owner at the highest price. So if you understand their role and what they're doing, then you can approach the negotiation and the whole buying process with a much more open mind and, and professional attitude. It's not trying to, to beat them or win them. It, then you've got to work with them. And it's really important to stay professional in the way that you deal with them. All right. And some final comments, Rich, about fear and fearing fear itself. I would say the only thing to fear is fear itself. Fear, if you want to unpack it, is false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. So don't overanalyze. You know, get out there, do your research and make a confident decision backed up by data. All right, plenty of takeaway there. Rich Harvey, you have yourself a wonderful Friday. You're back into another weekend, so you didn't have to wait long and catch you back next Friday. Thanks, Greg. Look forward to it next week. We connect you to the best real estate information across Australia. The Real Estate Podcast.